Well, welcome back, baseball fans. The 1971-74 Carrier League. Looking at the card set analysis uh, in the 1974 box we have here. Uh, we've opened it up last week and got through the America League East and the America League North. We also, you know, we have all of the cards for the full season here of 74. They have not in the league yet. Plus, of course, we have nameless cards that are written in for a grand total of 640 in here. So there's going to be a lot of rookies as well as the keepers for each of the teams. So tonight, we're going to pick up in the America League Midwest and the America League West. And so, with that, we'll begin with the Chicago White Sox, who have uh, good things on the horizon. They uh, battled Oakland in the League Championship Series a year ago, falling in six games. It was a very good team. Uh, they made some nice acquisitions. Um, they acquired Jack Aker as a keeper, bringing back Louis Aparicio, catcher Tom Egan, and they acquired Ken Henderson. So let's see what they can get from 74. So here's Aker, but he's much better in one of the earlier years, either 71 or 72. This card's not too bad, not too good either. It's kind of ordinary there. Uh, Tom Egan, also, he's got another year as a younger player in either 71 or 72, so not that one. And here's Ken Henderson. And this might be, actually, the best of the four years we've seen for Ken. He brings you that great defense in center field. It's a little bit of space stealing, good speed, power, switch hitter. Kind of puts it all together here. Like the double there and the extra base hits. And when you look at the stats, yeah, that's a full season with 20 homers and a 292 average. And it actually is with the White Sox, not with the Giants. So this would be a four-year contract. So if you're going to make the move for Ken Anderson, you might as well get his best year with the Chai Sox for four years versus kind of an up-and-down performance, which is what actually happened. Um, now we'll look at their rookies, and there's going to be a rookie here to join Ken Anderson, at least one. Uh, here's Bucky Dent. Um, you know, he's a good, solid shortstop if we need that, but we have Aparicio in the pipeline already. A very young Brian Downing already has that ability to draw walks. Always known for that in his career. Here's the guy, though. Last year, the White Sox had two guys, Jim LaFay and Bobby Knoop, both at around 200, playing second base for him. This year, though, my goodness, what an upgrade this would be. Defense is not there, of course, but you're adding a 316 bat. And Ken Anderson's a 292 bat. And this offense is suddenly going to be electric. It already is. They got Bill Melton and Dick Allen, Carlos May, Walt Williams, Aparicio. Tony Muser's got a nice card. So, yeah. We can, we can keep looking. Rich Gossage is not really ready yet. Bart Johnson would be a nice starting pitcher if they needed that. But they're very deep in their rotation. They got Wilbur Wood. Uh... Uh, Mr. Uh, forget his name, Bradley and Stan Bonson. But by 74, this is a nice year for Bart Johnson. So good to know they have some pitching in the future in the pipeline. Good future for the White Sox. They're going to have a good year. They might be the favorite in this division now. However, the Kansas City Royals will have something to say about that. Their keepers are Dwayne Josephson, Bob Oliver, Marty Patton, and Horatio Pena. Bob Oliver still, from 70 to 74, he still has a decent, decent years each time. All right, then we have Marty Patton, and Marty is uh, has a nice year, but he's a starter 5-4. I'm not crazy about starting a 5-4, so he'll probably be a reliever. And then there's Horatio Pena, and this is what we talked about, that there's going to be certain players who don't have a strat amount of card in 74, though they did generate statistics. This is the, what the stats he generated, so I uh, made a handwritten card just to act as a placeholder so that the talent, that 640 cards, can be dis redistributed in the 74 box versus the 570 cards the strat -matic actually had. So not a great keeper class, but let's look at the rookies. And speaking of rookies, we're looking at arguably the first round pick of the Kansas City Royals. And this would be Brett, and this, this is gonna be a 282 Brett. But this is certainly decent enough to get into the league because he's a Hall of Famer. Always try and do that, even if 
the performances in Hall of Fame yet, just to get his name recognition in there. They have Paul Shaw at third base now. They could move him. Al Cowens, it doesn't quite produce yet. Doesn't quite at, uh, but he's still got the good defense. Jerry Hairston, not so much here either. Craig Cusick is a nice power hitting first baseman versus left handed pitching, but uh, Frank White, yeah, he's not ready yet. Um, he's just making his, you know, 221, 200 at bats, but he's known as a gold glove second baseman. He's not there yet. Now, Steve Busby eventually has to get into this Kansas City rotation at some point. He needs to calm down the, the walks. And this one actually may be his best performance. This year, 22 game winner in 74. And so this year or 75, and it might be this year, you might as well get it now. As a starter eight, this would really help this Kansas City team if they have room in the rotation. You already have two pitchers who are right-handed who are keepers, Marty Patton and Horatio Pena. So you could choose to not keep one of those guys and keep a rookie Busby instead. This is not a rookie, by the way. Busby was in the league in 73, but we didn't like that card. And Del Canton's got a nice card as well. So the pitching looks bright. The big bats aren't here yet, though. It's, um, the Amos Otis's. Well, Amos's Otis is on the team, but he'll have a better offense. Al Cowan's, his, his numbers will get better. So the White Sox and the Kansas City Royals will be probably contending for the division. You've got a young Milwaukee team on the rise. Milwaukee is J.L.U., Jim Fragosi, Ken Sanders, George Scott. J.L.U. is still mostly a pinch hitter. Actually, 220 at-bats. He's more than that for the 80s. Would have gotten a World Series ring for them in 74. Mostly a singles hitter, not much power. Jim Fragosi. Now his bat's back. He had kind of slumped into the 230s in the previous years. Back up to 260 with plenty of power. But now his glove is starting to wane and he can't play shortstop anymore. So that's a pretty big deal. But you know who can play shortstop for the Milwaukee Brewers. That's a kind of be a little rhetorical question as we'll answer it pretty soon. Uh, George Scott, 73, is fantastic, and 74 is as well. You got your choice. I think statistically, 73 is a little better. He's over 300 with over 20 homers. Still a good card. All right, now let's look at the rookies. We got a corner outfielder, actually a center fielder as well. Bob Colusio, good defense, decent bat. Pedro Garcia, oh, his bat's not good this year. It's better the previous year. If you need a second baseman, take the 73 version. Tim Johnson, uh, a good left-handed hitting infielder, which is always advantageous. 245. Charlie Moore, you know, yeah, we have Daryl Porter. Porter and Moore would be a nice platoon. Lefty-righty behind the dish. Bill Sharp, corner hitting outfielder, had a better year in 73 than this one. 253. And here he is. Here's Robin Yacht. So here is your new shortstop. So we mentioned Fergosi. It could be a two for one. You decide to move Fergosi out of shortstop and you insert Robin Yacht. Now this card, I will, I will say, should not be a first round pick as performance here is a lot less than the performance of Brett's. Not a full season and the batting average is just okay without much power yet. And he's 18 years old, I think. But for name recognition and being a Hall of Famer, you'd like to get him into the league as soon as possible. So they don't have to make him a first round pick. BPA says that the best player goes first. We know George Scott would be a lot better than Robin Yount. He would be higher in the drafting list. Bill Champion. That's a decent starter. Does a nice job. Yeah, 361 and 162 innings. Kevin Gobell. He also does a nice job. And he's left handed. Always valuable. And to put him in the bullpen might be even be more valuable. This is a ki kind of card that should get into the league. Whether it's in his first year of eligibility, it might be a different story. But ignore the one loss record on a bad team to look at the uh, ERA. And here's a young Jim Slayton, starter seven. Does he pitch on three days rest here? He does. Again, forget that. Look, Concentrate on the uh, pitching on three days rest and the ERA below four there. 
Bill Travers. Nah, probably puts too many on bases on balls here. For my, yeah, I don't think this card would be the one I would take for Bill Travers. So, you know, it's they're moving forward. They're taking steps forward, but they're they're in a tough division. I think the White Sox and the Royals are both better, and now possibly even the Twins. And the Twins, their protectors are, their keepers are, Rod Carew, Killebrew, Phil Roof, Stan Williams. And here we go with a magnificent Rod Carew card. Don't ignore the walks, folks. He's already hitting 366, I believe. But then you toss the walks in, and this may be as good as that 80, uh, 388 card he had in... Uh, See the 74 walks plus the 364? It's a shame his defense is bad. He's a 2 and 73. Frankly, both cards will eventually be in the league. I would go with the 73 card because of the defense, and then eventually to this card a year later. But it's Carew. I mean, just you keep upgrading his cards throughout the decade for the Twins. Killebrew, it's good to see that he can still be somewhat productive at a very old, old age here. Five years removed from an MVP. Um, he's very old now. And, and he's in the era of the DH. Probably you don't want him to be a full-time player with this card. And he's got better cards in 71 that we'll use anyway. Phil Roof uh, still doesn't have a, a, a great card, but he has a good card in 75 for next year. That's the silver lining. Yeah, 196. So I hope the Twins have a, a rookie or so to go with Mr. Uh, Carew. And they do. You got Steve Bry, center fielder here. No power, though, interesting. He would have eventually have power. That's a nice batting average, like a 281 batting average here. 283, but no power. Not a lot of walks either, but a fun card. Decent enough card. This guy's got power, Bob Darwin. Your, you your center fielder and your right fielder. This is a starter. This is a full-time player. Yeah, five, 600 plate appearances with 25 bombs, 264 batting average. So there's some young talent coming up the pipeline for the Twins. Eric Soderholm. His 73 card's better than this, so this is fine. His defense is very good. A 276 hitter. We saw Terrell. His 73 card is also better. Good to know we got options for multiple years for these players. Danny Thompson. This is his first productive year, but I think he's even better in 75. Chico Cardenas is currently playing short, but this would be the heir apparent. Vic Albury, always looking for left-handed pitching, and he is okay. An okay for lefty might be good enough, to be honest here. You know, a 412 ERA for a lefty is still uh, can get into the league. It's it's highly competitive, but we need lefties. And if you're not horrible, uh, and I would say Vic is not horrible at all. He's just very average, I would say. Uh, he could get in the league. How about a very young Bill Campbell? Look at this. Uh, he wins 17 games one year in relief. I think it's in 75 or 6. Nice card for Bill Campbell. 263 ERA. They keep coming, folks. The Twins are deep. We talked about the Royals having a deep farm system, but it seems like the, the older Twins of the late 60s, the uh, the Killebrew, Oliva, Zoilo for, say, Zo Zoilo for size, Twins, whatever, uh, they've restocked, and they got young, and they got some nice players. 329 and 249 innings on the rotation. So a very nice, talented rookie crop of twins, and now this division's pretty, pretty competitive. Uh, maybe the uh, White Sox and Royals aren't going to battle. Maybe the Brewers and the Twins put up a fight. All right, let's pause a moment, and then we'll come back with the American League West. All right, the American League West. We will begin with the California Angels: Eddie Fisher, Bill Singer, Jim Spencer, Cesar Tovar. All right, so Bill Singer is still decent by 74, though we find there's a better year previously that we like. Uh, this car will eventually get into the league at a certain point, but not yet. Jim Spencer, uh, he's got that one at first, but he doesn't have lefties at all here. Does have nice power, though. 
it's definitely the one in the power, 278, might get him into the league, versus another Spencer card that is a full-time player. Here, he's got to be in a platoon. He needs help over there. But as a, sometimes guys are better as one-way players than when they play full-time. And so you, that's the choice with Spencer. One-way or full-time. Cesar Tovar no longer can play the infield. Outfielder, was a 300 hitter, would get 200 hits, or a ton of hits, hit 300. At this point, though, he still has 292. He was 73 wasn't so much. 71 and 2 are probably the candidates. He's still got a B there and a B hit runner. Yeah, and no double plays, really, which is always something to consider, too. They didn't give him power, of course. Okay for the Angels. Nothing spectacular there, but not bad. They're rookies. Winston Lennis, infielder. Okay. 261 hitter, maybe? Oh, come on. That's remarkable. Well, folks, every once in a while, uh, the sun the sun's, will shine on the dog's butt every once in a while, folks, and I just hit a betting average. Okay, Winston Lennis. So there you go, a 261 hitter, and he's fine. He's okay. Rudy Mioli, never really did a whole lot, but he's left-handed and can play shortstop. Always valuable. Oh, uh, boy. I'm mm, going to call this 229. 244. Sorry. Sorry, Rudy. I guess I just had a... The uh, didn't have the rose-colored glasses on. Tom Pachorek. I believe he was a Dodger, actually. Uh, a two in the outfield, uh, but his bat's not ready yet. It's a no to him. Tony Soleta. First baseman. And unfortunately, you're on the same team with Jim Spencer, so the two of you really don't work to get fit together well. Spencer's got a better glove anyway. You got a little more power. Leroy Stanton might be making his debut. Great arm and range in the corner. And, and in center. Now, that would be advantageous to exploit that. Put him in center with a minus three arm and a two. That would help the Angel pitching staff a lot. I'd like that move. He's almost an everyday player. And actually, hitting righties better than lefties might be advantageous to him. I wish he had, was a base stealer. 14 runner. Interesting card. Hard to guess this average. Um, 266? 267. I try so hard. Okay. But yeah, that's a reasonable card. Like I said, that defense, though, I, I'm really tempted to overdraft this guy because I want that arm and range and center. Andy Hassler's arrived. Good lefty reliever. A good lefty starter. My goodness, that's right. He starts this way. Uh, Hassler, Hassler had some struggles in the 70s, but he returned with a good 1980, I think. But this might be the high watermark early on. 261 and 162 innings. That's a nice card, but they already have Clyde Wright and Frank Tanan in rotation. So it's a question of fit. He might have to wait, unfortunately. Dick Lang is a okay starter. A back end starter, number three or four. Yeah, that's fine. Dave Sells, not so much. Oh, I hate the triple there, of course. And the homers. 520? 369. 369. I'm way off on this one. I hate that triple, folks. And you better get these outs. A walk on seven and a triple there. Walk on seven and six there. I'm not seeing 369. Sometimes, if the innings are low, yeah, this is a typical stratomatic phenomenon here. If the innings pitched are low and the guy's got a low ERA, oftentimes the card will not be very impressive because the whip walks and hits and innings pitch is extraordinarily high here, plus 16 walks and 14 Ks and the three homers. So these are all bad indicators. That's a great indicator, but it doesn't really tell the story. And here is Frank Tanana. We also like your 73 card. You got two cracks in him, 73 or 74. Great news for the California Angels. Not bad. 73 and 74 were a good year for baseball. 72 was a, la a labor. There was a strike and stats were down. And then they instituted the DH and then... 
A lot of good players bloomed in 73 and 74, both hitters and pitchers. Now you've got, we got the Oakland A's. I'm enjoying a 74 box. The Oakland A's, Sal Bando, Burke Campanaris, Orlando Cepeda, Gene Tennis. Last year in the dynasty, Bando would go out with a bang if that was the case here. Fine card. Actually, all years in this timeline are good except for one, except for 72. The walks make up for the batting average. He's got the power and the range. Campanaris is a two shortstop and a nice batting average. 290. This could be the Campanaris we take. We definitely want him as a two. We saw what happened as a three shortstop. He got gave up too many hits. Orlando Cepeda, by now, he's just a DH. And actually, he's finally starting to become mortal. Yeah. We've been waiting for this moment to happen when Orlando Cepeda wasn't any good anymore. And we found it right here. And Gene Tennis, he's got a better 73, better throwing arm here finally, plenty of power, and the walks are present, but not as many walks as you'd think. 110, but it's a 211 batting average, so it's a little deceiving here. 211 average, only 17 doubles, so you got a 26 homers in those walks. I wish they were, yeah, one of single, one of three. I'm just, I guess this. Bring his percentage up and get more walks. Yeah, I'm not going to take this tennis card. He's got a better card in 73. Now let's look at Oakland's rookies. Vic Harris. Nah, it's not going to work. Bill North. Now Seattle. The Mariners, in expansion, got a Bill North 73 card. So whichever team drafts North first gets North first. Seattle is, of course, earlier in the picking in the draft. So, if the idea is to compete with the Oakland A's in the West, don't let Oakland get this guy, is what I would say if you're Seattle. And if they don't get this guy, they might just take this guy instead anyway. So, it's a nice consolation prize in center field. Not the defensive player of Bill North. But Claude L. Washington's got a fine card here. Nice batting average. 81. 2. 86. Damn. No home runs. Jim Todd. Relief 4-5. Just okay. But we already have Bob Locker. Yeah, he could make it in the bullpen. Not bad. I, I'm starting to think that the Mariners are going to take Bill North because they're almost forced into it. <laughs> like all the other teams in the American League are going to demand... Don't let Oakland get Bill North, Seattle. You have to take uh, <laughs> Bill North, whether you like him or not. And, and they have a center fielder. They have Dave May in center field, the do the Mariners. Speaking of them, they're on the clock. Norm Miller, Skip Pitlock, Diego Segui, Luke Walker. All right, so Skip Pitlock as a lefty is not bad. Not bad. And again, he's left-handed, so we always want to find the good spots of lefties. Bad ERA, but can I get the card to work? No homers, not a lot of extra base hits, and you want him to come in and face lefties anyway. I think he makes it. I think he gets in, but not, you know, in the later rounds of the draft. Diego Segui, he's got better cards earlier when he's younger. This one isn't too bad. You ready for Luke Walker, sort of like Segui. Starter relief, can go back and forth between roles as a lefty. Uh, this is not the good left we would like because he does not do well here. So we'd like to see Luke with one of his earlier cards. Now let's look at the rookie class. And of course, North won't be here because he's on Oakland. So a very young Bruce Bakhti. He probably would have been an angel or an Indian here. An angel. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, two, um, 72. 270. Angel Hermoso, not much there. Mike Phillips, not saying that either. Dave Schneck, not saying that. You know, the Mariners just, they get everybody else's leftovers when it comes to rookies. Frank Tepadino, no, not happening. Dave Pagan, <laughs> no, not either. Not a good crew there. That's unfortunate. 
So, but we did see the Bill North of 73, which is clearly the best of the Seattle rookie options. So now you're seeing why Seattle would take him first, because the 74 guys are lousy. All right, last team tonight, your Texas Rangers, and then I'll call it for the American League. It's Bernie Allen, and some of these guys are going to be Washington Senators. Bernie Allen, Billy Canigliaro, Frank Howard, and Bob Johnson. If you're wondering about that, <laughs> those are all Washington Senators, most of them. And that means that I don't have any of those guys here. They all have to be picked in the years of 71, 72, or 73, because I don't have any cards here. They'd be sitting on top. And, of course, these players are the current active Texas Rangers. So it's going to have to be rookies for them in 74. And they got some nice ones. Tom Grieve. It's got the power. Decent bat. 262 hitter. 255. But he's got the power. That's fine for him. But here's the guy you should go for. Get Mike Hargrove up in either 73 or 4. Two first basemen. The human rain delay actually doesn't walk enough. He'll walk more eventually than he does here. Yeah, 323 batting average, though. Boy, that's got to be the pick, huh? For the Rangers, when you don't have any keepers at all. Len Randall backing him up. So this is the template for the team's top hitter at 323. Len Randall's got the second template, and they might also be hitting 300. And it might also be pretty close to that. I'm going to say 314, 302. High percentage over here, and that's an out, and that's an out. That would make, bring the average down. But I'd go with these two guys in 74. The young guns, Hargrove and Randall. We brought up... Uh, i tell you what we brought up. We brought up uh, last year, we brought up uh, Burroughs and Hera. So the young guns are coming to Texas soon. Then you got Jim Sunberg. You don't need him right away. He's got a minus two arm. He'll have a minus four arm. He, and this is f a draftable card. This is a fine card, but you've got too many better players here. Jackie Brown. He's nice, but 357 pitches on three days rest. Yeah, that's a nice card. The young David Clyde. Lefty. Right out of a senior prom. 438. Hey, how about a closer? Steve Focal. Wow, that's a great closer. That's a very talented closer right there. Steve Focal. 144 innings as a relief three. It's a ton of work and well worth it. One of the top closers in the game. So, wow, Texas has got some young talent here. Stan House walks too many guys. And that's it. So, it's going to be a tale of two teams. You're going to have the, for Texas, you're going to have the old, ga the old guard of Bernie Allen, Billy Canigliaro, Frank Howard, and Bob Johnson, over 30. And then you're going to have these young guys, Hargrove, Hargrove Len Randall, and Focal. That's it for the American League. When we resume, we'll pick it up with the Ameri National League East and the National League North. Thanks for checking this out, folks. We'll see you next time.